Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on when you are viewing us. Welcome to Around Town with Dave Walsh. My name is Dave Walsh, and I will be a host today. Our show covers events and happenings in the town of Stoughton, and the people who make the happenings happen. I'm fortunate to have here today our superintendent of public schools of Stoughton, Dr. Joe Bayetta, if I can call you Joe. Absolutely. Okay, great. So uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, great. So how I like to usually start the show off is just kind of give us a background on you know, sure. who Joe is. And yeah, uh, so I'm a graduate of Stoughton Public Schools. I've lived in town since I was five years old. I Yikes. still reside in town. Um, been a public educator for 33 years. Uh, last 16 as superintendent. This is my second year in Stoughton. Uh, been a town meeting member, a school committee member in town, um, and um, I guess in some way activist with certain situations and things supporting elected officials or uh, supporting uh, things like the South School or any of that stuff. Yeah, I de definitely have seen you around town, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, yep. I think you've been definitely embedded in Stoughton, especially growing up in the town. Yeah. It probably yep. gives, you a, gives you a better understanding of the. It's a great community. Yeah. I mean, uh, my wife and I uh, decided to stay here, raised our daughter here. Um, to be quite honest, we, you know, we wouldn't do anything else. It's a great community uh, to, to bring kids up in. Um, it's still a safe community. Um, and I think really provides services that I know a lot of surrounding communities um, do not, uh, both to young kids as well as our elderly and bilingual community and so on and so forth, so. Yeah, and I, I actually just did the COA on our last show, and it was, you know, it was great to do that. It, it, I did the rector department, so yeah. there's been a, a lot of it's, good things. When you, when you work outside of town and you see what we do in Stoughton, you gotta look in the, in the mirror and say, we're doing all right. Exactly, so. Totally agree, and I guess speaking of that, um, I think I saw some uh, stuff about the busing sure. going on, and I, and I just heard some great news, so <laughs> it's very timely to, to, yeah, to so, have you on the show. So, so. As, of, as of recording this show here on the 27th of August, um, tonight at the school committee meeting, we'll be announcing formally uh, that we're able to get our students uh, onto buses. Uh, we've done so by a review of our budget, by going through all of our new hires, positions not filled, specifically administration and all of that. but. Um, we have not touched the classroom in any neg negative way. Matter of fact, we added a kindergarten teacher at, for, because class sizes were at 26. We added a third grader at the DAW because class sizes were at 27. We've done all of that and now the busing through the savings of the hiring process. So we had cut our monies during the budget process by December of those people who had announced their retirement and we basically uh -huh. just said we're only going to hire people at M5, so 64,000. Then since then we have a number more folks, so we've used that bucket of money to say it's time to prioritize the transportation. Uh, clearly, um, it was a very emotional issue. Yeah. Our Stotonians have been fantastic, to be quite honest, even though a lot of emotion and passion, um, some commentary that is, to be quite honest, not needed because you know people think that we're not trying to do the right thing. Uh, my folks have been working their tails off on weekends, yeah. after hours, to get this done, and so um, we'll get there. Unfortunately, the, the, federal, the national news picked it up. Um, as, yep. a, as a big thing, connected it to a lot of the other political issues that getting into for me is, Understood. it's a no-brainer yeah. because I can't win. No, right. no matter what <laughs> I say, right. the question marks are gonna be there. Um, and then when it got picked up nationally, that's when a lot of the real nastiness, especially you yeah. know, emails and co communication from nobody in Massachusetts, people out of yeah. state and all of that. But it goes with politics. But you also opened up, didn't you have like a form where yeah. people could, you know, Yeah, I, I, we, had a, we had a parent form that was open to the entire community. I mean, there were questions about it being only an invitation. The invitation was I, I can only reach um, my parents, my families, and then put it on the web pages and social and link it, which is what we did. And then anybody doesn't have children in, in town or anybody. We had news stations on it. And it was a very good meeting. Um, I get it. Putting a kid on a bus is important to families in today's right. working families. I understand right. that. Yeah. But we didn't anticipate 162 new registrants, registrations. We just didn't anticipate that. Sure. We're up over 300 registrations since we wow. went from, from, a no, from fee based to no fee based. Uh -huh. Clearly, there's a need, so that's one. Uh, but clearly, we have to take a look at doing this earlier, number one. And number two, consider do we have fees or not? And again, People think that a fee pays for that entire bus. You gotta remember that a bus per student is over $1,100 mm. for the year. Wow. One student. 
per student. Per student. Wow. So when you look at that and you have a fee, you, you, exactly, you yeah. subsidize. It's about $79,000 a bus. And in the past so, it was subsidized by parents and then yeah, it went to no fee. Yeah, it went to yeah. no fee. And basically it came down to um, the SOA money, the Student Opportunity Act money that we received back in November of 22, if I remember correctly. I wasn't here, but I remember the discussion about these fees as something we need to support families with because we had the money coming in from the Commonwealth. Yeah. Well, those days have become tighter. Um, so we're going to have to take a look at it. I'm not suggesting we're going to have fees. I'm just suggesting that we're going to have to talk about all of this sure, stuff. We're going to sure. have to talk about process. So did the SOA go away? Just to be no, clear. the SOA is still there. It's just the SOA isn't the amount of money that it has been. Uh, okay. um, when so we have a couple reduced. more years. Of, it's been reduced. We have okay. a couple more years. We had an increase to the school budget. I want to be clear to the public. We did see an increase to the school budget, but it wasn't an increase, and it was a significant increase, 7.1%, but it wasn't an increase that covered our level services to keep what we had because our expenses were up so much. Right. So you add 700 EL students, 700 special education students. You add the migrant situation, which is this school year is going to be over 120 students, um, and add it to all of that, a growing student population. Right. It's a, it's, it is a perfect storm of yeah, events. Yeah, they're all lining up. It's <laughs> all lining up at the same time. So yeah. you can put the blame on you know, this migrant situation, which is very passionate for people, but just leave that to the side. Stoughton is a growing community. It's where people want to come. I just left the office to come here. My residency office, where people register, yeah. has a line out the door. Are you serious? This is wow. what's happening. Wow. So people are still registering their students. People are still moving into town. Yeah. Um, and it's a place that people want to live. And I think a lot of it has to do with um, what Stoughton's always been known for. Right. It's a welcoming community. welcoming community. It's centrally located. Right. It's, I know that it's expensive, but in, 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 in relation to other communities that surround us, it's not. Right. Um, and, um, and so that's what's happening with these families. They're moving in at a rate that's incredible. I mean, we're, we're more of an urban district today than we've ever been. Yeah, and I, I think as a parent, it must be, you know, you have to know where to go in order to register your student as well. So it's good to know that. Yeah, long term, we'd like to change the registration and residency uh, um, office to more of a welcoming center for families uh, yeah. and supporting uh, with all information from the town. So where's the town hall? Where do you pay your taxes? Yeah. Who do you call if you need trash? all of that, just have it centrally located for our families to have all of that information in one bucket. It's a great um, idea. And, and allow for, and the cost is, is not significant, but uh, it's just a lot of work that you have to do to, 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 to do it. But translation services, that's a huge one. Yeah. Um, in terms of the kids are learning English very quickly, but the adults, it's a little slower of a process. It yeah. just is, it is. I mean, right. we had 50 EL parents um, and um, uh, take uh, a class at Stoughton Academy this, this past spring. Uh, so okay. we know there's a need and a want Right. You know, it's not like people are saying, I don't want to learn English. No, they're saying we want to learn English. We just don't have the capacity for it. Right. Yeah. And, and you have to staff for that to be able to do that. It's all about that. that. Right. And in fact, I think um, Tom Calter was trying to do something within the town offices as well because, yep. you know, people come into the town offices to understand, to be able to talk to residents as well. So yep. understand that. I guess, so thank you for clarifying that because sure. that's been certainly a thing. And I guess uh, with that, I guess the next big controversial item has been the South School Project. I don't know if you want to touch that yeah. and just give an like, update of where that starts. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, so the update right now is that there's a, the building committee will, be, will become, um, if you will, reactivate itself probably, I'm guessing, the second week of September. That's what's on my calendar for the next meeting date. Now. But I'll leave that up to T.J. Recuper, who's the chair, to put that out. We did receive the letter from the SBA extending us to next April of 25. Okay. In between there now will be the most difficult part of the process uh, until the actual vote, which is all the reorganization and information. Um, uh, Tom Andrew Calter has put together a independent working group um, that's, that's working on gathering some information. The building committee will continue to do um, its thing. It's, it is the governing body of that building uh, committee, right? It's, it's been appointed. It's, it's the group that has the, the final recommendations um, for what that building looks like. And MSBA is also very strict. This is not throw away your current plan and restart from scratch because that means you're going back. What they're yeah. looking for is how are you going to get this to the taxpayers in a successful way. You can't really, you can't touch the educational plan. So if you wanted to cut back on something, if they consider that a significant change, forget it. They're not going to allow you to do it. Then you go back in so, the queue. And, and then, then you go back in the queue. And the problem for Stoughton's queue is actually, well, for, before we get there, the, the first part is we really have to do a better job, I have to do a better job of communicating to the community um, what's going to happen to the South School, number one. Number two, um, what, what does the restructuring of the district look like? Because remember, we're, what we're trying to do is take an old school off 
line completely right. and go to four elementary schools mm -hmm. and eventually probably even three down the line. Wow. Um, and the reason for that is even though we're growing, what we're seeing is that MSBA is really supporting larger elementary schools and the idea of local district elementary schools is becoming more and more of a unaffordable, mm -hmm. right? Um, south, south area of town is also the fastest growing part of town, okay. right? We're at 315 kids in that building. Wow. Right, we've never exceeded 280, you know. So, <laughs> right. um, the building has significant issues. Um, the cost is significant. And for the record, the building that is being built, that some question the size and the Taj Mahal comments and so on and so forth, you're building a building for 50 plus years of service. Mm -hmm. You want to build a building that provides you, the taxpayers, its students, and the staff the opportunity to have that building be there for the next 50 years right. and have the opportunity to expand it if the community continues to grow and go in that direction. So we, I have to do a better job of communicating that the long-term plan is that potentially operational budgets in terms of buildings, right? The current Jones School costs more to heat than the new high school. Wow. Yeah, I think I heard, you know? I heard that. Statistic. And so when you look at it, it's all about efficiencies. Right. It's about efficiency of scale, and it's about efficiency of what you're trying to do, and it's about efficient educationally. And the third part, it's about efficiencies of things like utilities and long-term planning. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things we're working on right now is creating a capital plan for the school district. We can't just count on MSBA projects or accelerate repair MSBA. Right. The negative implication of the South School vote is A, the South School, and B, the implication for the middle school. The next. That, the next. Right. And that is huge because right. that building has significant issues. So is there an um, implication if the South School fails at the, at the vote that it threatens the middle school it as threat, an option? It threatens us as a community that's not willing to pay for a new building okay. to MSBA. And MSBA is going to say, we've extended you to another project. And by the way, that extension requires our select board, who have been taking some heat, uh, by no voters at meetings, rightfully so, public comment, I understand that they have the right to do so. But to say, you know, if you do put this on the ballot, then, you know, we might put somebody up against you in the Springtown, Springtown oh, meeting, which oh. I, I think is just... Uh, I hadn't heard that. Okay. Yeah, th which I think is just interesting yeah. politics. But that said, yeah. the voters spoke, but we still have a problem to solve. Right. We still have a problem to solve, and we have a long-term implication uh, for the town of Stoughton um, in terms of um, the, the OMS. Because when you're looking at the Wilkins, you're looking at upgrades. When you're looking at the, um, the Daw and the Gibbons, you're looking at renovations additions. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at having to gut that place. Right. Um, so th those, are, those are the differences of long term. And then again, we also have to be mindful that we recognize, I recognize that the town is also going through its own needs for building, right. i.e. the potential right. for, for a new police, right. police station being renovated, whatever the recommendation is going to be. Right. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, you know, getting that message out to the voters. The, I think one of the things is what's the alternative, I guess, if, if it does fall apart, is there alternatives that are being presented as? Yeah. And I know that's been talked about. Yeah, so we, we, stuff, have, so. we have two roads we're going to take this fall. The first road is I have to start a redistricting plan for 2026 because if the building goes through, then great, we're not opening up now until probably 28 instead of 27. Um, if the building doesn't go through, then September of 26, we will, by that time, everybody will be prior to that notified that kids are going to different buildings. Yeah. The question will be, do we redistrict and close the south and put modulars at the Daw and the Gibbons? Modulars are either leased or purchased. Modulars are short term. They're not there for 50 years. Yeah. Um, the um, mi the middle school's modulars are a perfect example, been there for over 20 years, 24 years now. And were they bought or they leased? No, they were purchased. Okay. I was on the school committee when it happened. Oh, okay. um, so they were purchased um, and, then, um, and then enclosed with the uh, outside um, uh, bricking and all that stuff. But when you look at it, the dynamics of, of the next step of redistricting is also the cost of modulars and leasing. Uh, there's going to be a cost to redistricting, then there's going to be uh, a cost to uh, which operationally could mean, um, will mean more busing, right off the bat. Yeah. Because you've got to take a whole side of town and say mm -hmm. how many miles are you away and so on. And then added to that is the renovation addition cost, which still requires planning, architectural, design, you know, fees, all, all that feasibility stuff right. with zero MSBA funding support. Right. All, so that would probably be a combination of borrow and debt exclusion or just a debt exclusion. Um, and at the current rate of um, interesting uh, uh, 
pre-COVID, um, we were building schools for you know five to six hundred dollars a square foot. We're over a thousand currently. Uh, yeah. So we know that the expense is there. So we also know that by pushing this project off, that the expenses have also gotten more. Right. Right. It's become. It's a $66 million project. Let's say that number comes down to X. I'm not even gonna try to announce the right. number, but let's say it's a little <laughs> less. The fact of the matter is your square footage just went up. Right. So you're, you're gonna have to do some major decision as you're, uh, as you're building that building, if it comes to fruition. Does MSNBA, I'm not that familiar with it, do they have any interest in trying to help with renovations instead of just? So they have an acceler accelerated repair process and okay. they have a renovation addition process. I actually did a, uh, went into phase two of five phase in my last community for the high school. We did a renovation addition, added 39,000 square feet to the high school. Um, came all the way down to the four walls. The floors were taken out, reconcrete, you know, all repiping, electrical, so on and so forth, and oh. then the addition put on. All new uh, electrical uh, technology, all the chairs and all the whistles, the new kitchen and all that. We went through that process with the South School. Okay. It is required by the MSBA that you look at renovation, renovation addition, new. You have to. And what was concluded was one of the things is, that is really significant is when you look at the value of a public building, the moment you hit the one-third threshold, that threshold requires ADA and new upgrades, upgrades to fire and all, and all of that stuff. Right. So if we were to put in, let's just say, new windows at the South School as part of a project, automatically ADA compliance. And I'll give you an example. In order to put a vestibule at the South School, we started to look at this idea, and I said, okay, how much is it gonna cost? Well, the front door is on ADA compliant. The moment I touched that front door, it just yes. went from a $90,000 cost, get this, as of yesterday, four hundred fifty dollars to $550,000 cost for a vestibule yeah. that we've been doing at other schools that are ADA, meet the Already ADA there, compliant. Right, compliant. So, so the issue is, is more complicated than just, quote, it's too expensive, my taxes are going up. It's, we've got all these rules and regulations that you need to follow. So the MSBA, through the building committee, this is before I got here, but I've gone back and read it. They looked at the renovation edition. They looked at just the reno, and we looked at enrollment. That's one of the reasons why the committee at the time fought for the school to be slightly bigger, because we knew that we were also growing. Do they look at renovation on the other buildings, the other school, to be able to take the Wilkins or something, add onto that, or yes. the DAR to be able to right. be another option? So that is a, that would be a different- Get a little out of my no, main no. care and coverage, this, but I just figured No, it's out a good question. Thing. So yeah. the MSBA is all based upon the local statement of interest, which is, si which is created by the school committee, signed off by the select board, and then goes in for a review. Every 10 years, every building, matter of fact, this year is one of the years, almost every building is chosen through the MSBA for a review. Our weakest school in, in Stoughton continues to be the South. Right. So the rating's gonna show that because it's already rated as, as the lowest. So um, what, they, what they do from there is when you put your statement of interest in, you could say, we're going to take down two elementary schools and build one. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? And then you have to prove to them that the phys facility itself is not feasible for a renovation addition without having to comply with all these federal laws and regulations that makes the price of it even more expensive. Right. And people don't believe that um, in general, uh, especially yeah. if, you're, if you're a no voter. Um, this was a debt exclusion, not a Prop 2.5 override. And I think that's another section I see that with my own family members, that one goes away, one continues to go up, and um, you know, um, no voters did a very good job, in my opinion, of putting it all together as one and the same thing. Right. Um, it is what it is. Right. Well, it sounds like there's, you know, there's more to be heard and yes. said on that. So I appreciate you. So I, I guess just switching to another subject, I guess, school year's getting started, right? So what's in preparation? Yeah. I guess what's new and exciting going on? And well, I just welcomed over 35 new staff members this morning. Um, 35? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So really happy about that. These are taking over for retirees. There's, like I said, there's only two new positions and that was because of enrollment that we did through attrition and savings. Um, we're not seeking more funding for those positions from, from town meeting and all of that. Um, but um, it's exciting to see uh, the opportunity that new people are having with coming to teach in Stoughton, yeah. right? And the diversity that we have and the expectations that we have. So it was great to see those folks this morning, be able to talk to them about our expectations of being an, an, an educator in the town of Stoughton. And I, I, I always say three things to, to the staff, you know, all students can learn. You have to have that philosophy. Yep. All students can learn. 
Second one is be flexible and adaptable. And three, the most important thing I think in public education today is motivate. Yeah. Motivate kids to be excited about learning as young kids, especially reading and mathematics, but also science and social studies, also technology, also music, yeah. also sports, all of those things that encompass so that we're trying to reach every kid in the area where they feel comfortable as much as possible. And that's hard to do. Oh, I'm not suggesting it's a challenge easy. for sure. But um, we're excited about the school year in many ways. Um, we have contracts settled. We'll be entering into negotiations with a couple of other groups this year. Uh, but they are working under their current contracts, so their contracts don't run until the end of the year. That's always a key issue that you know yes. labor and management are on the same page. Right. Um, we had the situation with transportation that we're, we're handling uh, practices. I just saw football players out there <laughs> at the high school today. This is a classic um, week yeah. for them to get started. My yeah. son played, so. so you know. Oh yeah. Middle school yeah. sports will be underway, and activities when the kids come back, we usually use, use, utilize a different format for them. But that, those programs are, are growing, and we're trying to add even more to it, including sports like volleyball at the middle school and all that. So those are things that we're wow. trying to incorporate, because our student our students need a place to go. Yeah. Now, the one thing about fees and elimination of sports fees is having 300 more students participate last year. Wow. That's 300 kids with a place to go yeah. for an entire 8 to 12 week season yeah. or multiple seasons because most of our athletes are multiple season athletes. So um, that was 300, make sure I understood this. Yeah. 300 new students went into the sports Three, This is 300 kids who th didn't play soccer the year before, didn't wow. even try out. When you have 70 kids go out for a sport that for years has had, seven, has had 40, you know you did the right thing. Yeah. So kudos to the former superintendent and the former school committee and the continuation of, of the administration and school committee <laughs> on making yeah. sure that fees for activities and, 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 uh, and athletics aren't there. Yeah. Um, it is a, it, I think it's, it's key because it helps to extend. Now, with that comes the... We need a late bus, and you know, because yeah. kids need to get home, and all of that, which we are providing at the secondary level this year. But again, the stresses on the budget always cause those things to, to, to come up to play. I think the other thing that's exciting um, um, about um, this year, and the, the thing that I always find, is um, staff is ready to come back. Student, I mean, you, you always, everybody's going to joke about. It, I don't want to come back yet, but <laughs> we're, we know we know the rhythm of how this works as educators, yeah. right? We every September we're back. Mm -hmm. Right, and the kids are back, and we're working with kids and, and all of that. Our materials have been ordered, um, and there's some stresses on the budget line, but in general, very positive, um, uh, as, especially as soon as we get past some of this uh, negative stuff with the transportation. Yeah, and, and it, just to reiterate one of your points is that, you know, you know when you were a child going through school and stuff, there was always some teacher that motivated you in some form of fashion that really helped you, and, and you remember those teachers, and you remember the, the motivation they gave you, and how that helped you, you know, was, form yourself as you... It was one of my lines with the new teachers, with the new employees today. I said, I, I know that you all can think of that teacher. Exactly. In most cases, that was positive. Yeah. Who probably sent you down the line of becoming an educator. There you go. There you go. More than likely. I, I should have been in your audience doing the rah-rah because <laughs> I would have loved that. So I guess, you know, with that in mind, is there, you know, any changes that, you know, students should be aware of that well, we need to let I them mean, know? Well, I mean, we're really... Um, our. One of the key things for us is, is our student handbooks, right? And getting parents and families um, and consistency from staff around what does the school look like and what are the responsibility of students, right? Come, come to school prepared, right? We offer breakfast, we offer lunch, there's no cost under the stamp mandate right now. That's a great, great thing. That is a great um, thing. The, the, the other part I think that's really important is that when we look at the dynamics of um, discipline and behavior, remember we have student handbooks because of the five percenters, as I've called them my entire life. The five percent of kids <laughs> yeah, who usually yeah, make yeah, the school, understood. you know, question some issues and so on. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means 95 percent of our kids are meeting the goals. Yeah. yeah, they might act up one day. Yeah. Okay, it's a bad day. Everybody had, I had them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't expect our kids to be perfect, but I do think that there's an underlying theme that we really want to push, and that is the idea of respect. Yeah. And what is respect? Right. And getting our families to understand what respect is. I'm demanding that my teachers be and staff be respectful of our students and our families. Mm -hmm. I also believe that this is a two-way street, that we need to be seen as educators, as professionals, regardless if you're working as a custodian in the school, or you're a bus driver, or you're, you're the superintendent of schools. We should be treating our, our school employees who want to work with kids and are doing the best interest of kids by simply starting with a very simple word that means a lot, respect. Yeah. Right. And, and um, if we can do that with students and really target that with our students, I think long term, things like behavior and discipline get better. Not for everybody, right. but long term you have a, a theme and an understanding of what it is to be respectful 
as a student, as an, as an adult, and to adults and, and adults to students. I hate to go back, but the, you know, when we were kids, you know, did, do you think it, there's more respect today than there was when we were students? I mean, Boy, that's a heck of a question. <laughs> I didn't. I believe um, between at least I, between students, yeah. I think it's better now. I, I, I don't know. This I think that students. I think that students have a better understanding, in most cases, of what it is to quote, um, be different. Um, be accepting of those differences. Yeah. You don't have to agree with it, but you respect it from the perspective of, okay, you are this, you are that. I think there's a lot more of that. I agree. We see less that. bullying now um, and you know, than, than I've seen just a few years back. Um, it's still there, this still happens, um, but the fact of the matter is I think that in general, kids get along and understanding more. Yeah. And, a, and a lot of it has to do with society. And, and now the negative of that is the social media stuff that happens with kids and the yeah, stress, the stress of social that. media. I mean, do you want to address the whole cell phone? Yeah, policy? cell phones. That's, that's a, yeah, cell a phones, lot of school districts have been yeah, dealing with so that. Yeah, so cell phones for us continue to be, you know, the, one of those issues that, that's a struggle and it's going to always be a struggle. Um, I come from the, the, the perspective that if a student has their cell phone on them and they keep it um, on them and away from taking it out unless it's being used for an educational purpose, right? We do have a potential that in a math class you could take out your cell phone and use the calculator, calculator. As, as an example. Yeah. But students have to learn that that is an employability skill. Mm -hmm. That's an employability. You cannot yeah. be at work on your cell phone and checking your messages on a regular basis yeah. unless your cell phone is part of your work. Right. Other, otherwise, you're not going to have a job because yeah. yeah, your boss is going to see, see, see you. Test, yeah. So it is a teaching lesson. It is an employability lesson, in my opinion. Okay, and I appreciate that. We're coming down to the last minute or so. I mean, I guess to kind of wrap it up, I really appreciate you coming over. I know you're busy. You've got a lot of stuff going on. But is there anything you want to tell parents, I guess, at this point to, to, for the preparation for the new year, school year? Yeah, and I, I, I was going to say quickly, the music program or something. You want yeah, to throw that? I, well, first of all, a, when it comes to, I, I think, again, being new to Stoughton, but having lived here, but now running the school system, if you will, when it comes to anything to do with activities, especially within our fine arts and performing arts, you can't get any better. Right. I, I you agree. just cannot get I any agree. better. And I know this because I've experienced it in other places. Mm -hmm. And when you say Stoughton, we think about music and the arts, right? It's yep. that simple. And it's, yep. and it's a baby that Band we have to continue, the, right, the, yeah. which uh, we have a big one this fall cool. that we're hosting. So um, I think when you look at that, That's and, right. and then for parents, I think in general, I said, be active, be engaged. It's okay if you disagree with me. Please do it respectfully. That's all I ask for. Yeah. You can disagree. And thank you for those who did with this bus transportation and did it professionally. I know it's emotional, but what I learned about this process is our parents need to be more politically active on behalf of the school department and the town of Stoughton. Pure end of end of sentence. And how we have how, to. And I think we do that by attending meetings. I think okay. by being active in our PTOs. I think our PTOs would love to see you be, being yeah. active. Uh, it's once a month. Um, and if you can show up, you can. If you can, it's okay. That's good. No, I appreciate that. And so I think um, I think with that in mind, we're running out of time. I, I really appreciate you coming in. This was uh, Roundtown with Dave Walsh, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you for joining us.